Hi, everybody. Welcome to Monday at 3 Masterclass with Elizabeth Marvel. I'm Taylor Williams, the casting director at New York Theatre Workshop. We're broadcasting this talk from Zoom and simultaneously live streaming on Facebook Live. And we're so happy to have you all here. This class and all of the workshop's virtual programming is offered free and available to the entire MITW community. If you are in a position to support our work, we hope that you'll consider donating. You'll find a link to donate in the chat if you're joining us on Zoom and in the comments if you're joining us on Facebook. Now the class. During today's class, Elizabeth will work with eight volunteers on some pieces of classical text for about 90 minutes. You'll find a link to the pieces of text in the chat or in the comments on Facebook so that you can all follow along. At the end, we'll have about 15 to 20 minutes for Q&A. If you have a technical or logistical question about the platform, please share via the Q&A tab vis-a-vis -vis Zoom or comment vis-a-vis -vis Facebook. When we get to the Q&A portion, feel free to share your questions for the panelists via the same mechanism. If you're on Zoom and someone asks a question you're interested in, you can upvote it by clicking the thumbs up. On Facebook, you can use that like button. And we'll do our best to get to all the questions that we can in the time that we have. This class, as with all events facilitated by MYTW, is a safe space. Artists and participants are encouraged to engage with the class in a respectful and positive manner. And now please allow me to introduce our amazing teacher. Elizabeth Marvel is one of the most versatile and accomplished actors working today. She can be seen regularly on film and television on and off Broadway. And we are fortunate to say that she has been a regular at New York Theater Workshop over the years. So please welcome Elizabeth Marvel, who can turn her video on as well as all of our wonderful class volunteers. You can turn your videos Hello. on. Oh. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor. Hey everybody. So I am Elizabeth Marvel. And so today, what we're going to work on and talk about and think about is living thought. And uh, there is so much to uh, unpack here. I mean, we could get into meter, I am, trochee, anapest, dactyl, spondy, but that's almost like music theory. And we can have a whole nother class all on meter, <laughs> which is so fascinating and sort of a treasure chest of clues. It's like being a detective working with meter. But um, as I said, they were gonna discuss living thought. So in life, thought is something that we have privately, yeah, to ourselves. We, we think, we ponder, we hold it within our minds usually. But on stage, thought moves outward and it emerges and it comes alive and the vehicle that brings thought to life is language. A character needs words, must speak thought, living thought. So Artaud said that an actor is an athlete of the soul. So that means that we are going to prepare we are going to do our workout. We are going to practice like an athlete because that's what Shakespeare demands, yes? So part of this, our preparation is a prerequisite for, for winning. And our preparation is we begin, or at least how I begin, this is how I do it. So take from it what is useful and throw away what isn't. But how I begin, to approach a piece of text is I paraphrase it. Uh, I write it all out in a way that I understand so I can understand everything I'm saying before I do anything else because it creates my personal connection to the words and it helps me own the language so I can understand what I'm thinking and saying in an extremely specific way. So, the steps that I use to approach text is I make a paraphrase, and then I, through making the paraphrase, I'm able to identify the argument because acting is arguing. It's, it's really articulating a point of view, stating a position, laying out a line of reasoning, and building a convincing case. And so it, it kind of helps to think of it as a ladder and each step is a rung. So I make a paraphrase, I identify the argument, I check the meter, and 
I check the antithesis and then I find the verbs and I drive towards the line endings. So that's sort of a blueprint of what we're going to play around with today. So for my fabulous first two actors, Mary Glenn and Maddie, we're looking at Barun's speech from Love's Labor's Lost. And this one is really fun. So um, I think Mary Glenn, you wanted to begin. Do you want to do the first chunk or Maddie? I think Maddie wanted to Maddie. do the first one, yeah. So Maddie. I would love to. Let's dive in and let's begin with uh, what I started with, which is let's make a paraphrase, right? So, so what are we saying? What are we starting with? We're starting with um, let's go loves yep. sisters. Yep, that's right. Think, think about what you first swore you were going to do. Mm -hmm. You were going to fast, uh, you were going to study, and you yep. were going to refuse to see women, which is treasonous. That's, that's a crime it's a against crime youth. Against it's a crime. Yes. Um, can you fast? Can you not eat? Your stomachs, you, your body is too young. It will You're suffer for it. It's, yes, it's and, undeveloped. Yeah. You can't do that. <laughs> right, it'll make you sick to not It'll eat. make you sick. It'll make you weak. That's it'll right. Okay, oh, oh, we, uh, we pledged to study Oh, and right. In making that pledge, we have actually like denied and ignored the things that we are saying that we're going to be studying. Yes. And the vow has made us hate our studies. Yeah. For when would any of you, when would any of you? You or you or maybe the third guy you, you really hate. Like, right. Like three friends. Maybe would, one of the friends is really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> you or you or you you have have figured out if you were just like nose in a book boring boring study when would you have found out such passionate feelings as you've discovered by talking with these women and looking at these women and falling you can't write poems if you don't look upon a woman's face yeah um this part is okay okay the yeah, other yeah. S sort of um other more serious other studies more heavier serious studies. studies other mm -hmm. sort of more boring studies keep your brain like totally with blinders on and all you do is study and it takes so much more effort it takes so much more effort and by the time you're done learning it like that you've learned that one you don't even learn much anyway yeah. exactly you're exhausted. Yeah, but love, which we first learn about. Love, now here's the word, right? Love. This is the great argument. Yeah, yeah. Love. Love, and it's a thing that we first learned from looking at a woman by, by in their eyes, eyes, which are the window to the soul. That's correct. Um, Love doesn't doesn't live only walled in inside the brain. It's not just intellectual. It um, with with the it it moves through every part of your body, every part of your brain, every part of your also soul. So in in its nature, it's in the wind. It's in storms. It's with every element. It's wind, earth, fire, water. Yes, it's full of elements and it moves through you and every sense that you have, every ability that you have, every, facu every bodily faculty that you have, love doubles the abilities. It doubles the, the strength of every part of you. It makes you a Superman. Yeah. It turns you into a superhero. Yeah. This amazing fucking thing that we've been told to deprive ourselves of, which is insane. Why so basically the setup that you're walking into is all of your buddies, you have been like schooled and put in this very rigorous program and separated from your first experience of passion, your first taste, your first smell of love, love. Your body's just beginning to come alive and it's being deprived. And your yeah. friends say, 
well, we just have to live this way. We, we, we can't participate in that. We've made a vow. We've made a vow. We can't break our vow. Barun, help us. What do we do? Help us. Help us. So, Maddie, help us. Let's hear it. Okay, from the top. Go. Have at you, then, affections men at arms. Consider what you first did swear unto, to fast, to study, and to see no woman. Flat treason against the kingly state of youth. Say, can you fast? Your stomachs are too young, and abstinence engenders maladies. Oh, we have made a vow to study, lords, and in that vow we have forsworn our books. For when would you, my liege, or you, or you, have in leaden contemplation have found out such fiery numbers as the prompting eyes of beauty's tutors have enriched you with? Other slow arts entirely keep the brain, and therefore, finding the barren practicers, scarce show a harvest of their heavy toil. But love, first learned in a lady's eyes, lives not alone immured in the brain, but with the motion of all elements courses as swift as thought in every power, and gives to every power a double power above their functions and their offices. Awesome. That's awesome. So it's so much fun, oh, it's so much fun, when you really start digging in to like, also a nice little trick is when you have two constants, flat treason. So yeah. use that two T's to flat. give yourself a tiny sejura to mm -hmm. find that word, flat treason. Oh, the nice. Kingly state of youth. I mean, and also that the way the language is kingly state of youth, it's so, and also the line that precedes it, kind of uh, the, the rhythm of the line, to fast, to study, and to see no woman, the meter goes out of control at the end of the line. Oh, yeah. So you start one beat, two beat, ba 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 Yeah. What the fuck? Flat <laughs> treason! It's yeah. the kingly state of youth! And then you change your tactic. Okay, wait a minute. Can you even do this? Can you do this? Yeah. You're, you're too immature and it would make you sick anyway. Okay, that's kind of a bullshit argument. Fuck, we have made a vow to study lords. Wait a minute, oh. wait a minute. And in that vow, we forsworn our books. Here's my new line of reasoning. I'm on a new trail now. I'm following a new rabbit, right? Yeah. So now we're on to books. Okay, we're back to, yes, okay, we did make a vow. That is true. That is true. I can't talk my way out of that. But with that vow, let's examine that vow. Let's unpack that vow. Yeah. That yeah. vow was bullshit because with that vow, it made us hate our studies. Because when would you, or you, or you, in these horrible, heavy-headed studies loaded down with all of this logic and reasoning, have learned about art and poetry and music and life. It's depriving us of the, the true study, the true essence of learning, education, meaning, right? So this is his new argument. Uh, and then, then other slow arts entirely. And that's an interesting word, other slow, other slow arts entirely keep the brain and therefore finding barren practicers, antithesis, scarce show a harvest, barren harvest mm -hmm. of their heavy toil. And then now big crescendo. Now we finally got to the meat of the matter. Yes, take yeah. your time and arrive at it because you're really hitting the, ball out of the park now with this one. You know you've got it. You've yeah. made your way, you've built your argument, and you know you've got a solid point here. But yeah. love, love is your argument. Love is your, your full deck. Love is your winning hand, mm -hmm. love. And then you can savor it. Where, does, where do we first experience love first? Learn it in a lady's eyes, that woman that I just, fuck. Yeah, you can think of, right, think of her. Think of her. See it. Lady, it doesn't live in the fucking brain. It courses through my body. Yeah. It, it, and it's in everything. It's in the air. It's, and it moves like lightning. And it turns me into Superman. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you want to do another run of it? I would love to. I would Let's love hear to. it. Have at you then, affections, men at arms. Consider what you first did swear unto, to fast, to study, and to see no woman flat treason against the kingly state of youth. Say, can you fast? Your stomachs are too young and abstinence engenders maladies. Oh, we have made a vow to study, lords. And in that vow, we have forsworn our books for when would you, my liege, or you, or you, in leaden contemplation have found out such fiery numbers as the prompting eyes of beauty's tutors have enriched you with. Other slow arts entirely keep the brain and therefore finding the barren practicers scarce show a harvest of their heavy toil. But love, first learn it in a lady's eyes, lives not alone immured in the brain, but with the motion of all elements, courses as swift as thought in every power and gives to every power a double power above their functions and their offices. Awesome, okay, now Mary Glenn, here we go. So you're teed up, right? You've just arrived at the, the, the meat of the matter, right? We're in the argument of love. So now you get to really riff. This is now Barun's great riff. And okay, I think you're muted. There we go. Yay. Excellent. Um, so now you get to riff on how it's turned you into a superhero and how it's turning us all into superheroes, right? So let's, let's do the quick paraphrase. So we're clear on the argument and then uh, we can just let it rip. Cool. Uh, you will see, love adds like seeing powers to your eyeballs. People who are in love can see it farther than eagles, the things that are literally known for their sight. Right, because uh, I mean, it's almost a simple thought at first. It improves your eyesight. Uh-huh. It'll make you see better. And then, the thought grows, right? It'll make you see better than eagles. Exactly. Uh, and lovers' ears can hear the most, like almost silent sounds. I'm not sure about suspicious head of theft is stopped. Oh, no problem. So uh, that is uh, when a thief is listening intently. Got it. While stealing, you know, breaking in or stealing something. It's, it's hears more intensely than even a thief. It can hear something e even quieter than, than a thief that's listening to every little sound. Even they can't detect what love's ear can hear. Cool, great. Uh, and love feels more everything, more, uh, it's, it like senses, it's more sensitive to feeling than even uh, the like tiny little soft horns on snails. On snails! Which I mean, what know. an image! The tiny, delicate little, oh my God, that image just kills me. I love it. Yes. Um, and then love's tongue. Love's tongue, wink. Um, but uh, love, like, is totally. better, is uh, it, it makes you a better wordsmith. Like, it it takes um, this like God and makes him sort of like dull. Well, it, and and also, who is Bacchus? Do you know who Bacchus was? Yeah, he's like the god of I'm the, partying and wine, right? God of wine, yes. So so also, love's tongue has better taste than even Bacchus. Oh, great, 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 great. So those are two, I mean, I like your interpretation too, which is the right. beauty of Shakespeare. <laughs> there's a lot of room. <laughs> as long as it's specific, there's a lot of room. Cool. So now, and bravery. And of bravery. Love is as brave as Hercules. Just is, is, isn't love still out there climbing trees in the Hesperides, which I'm assuming Hercules was climbing? It's one of his labors when he had to go get the golden apples. Yes. Uh, so love's out there with Hercules, climbing trees. It's as um, s subtle, 
trying to think of like paraphrase for subtle as sphinx. I think it's, it is what, I think that's what it means. Yeah, as subtle as this uh, like uh, riddling. Completely mysterious. enigmatic, mm -hmm. mysterious sphinx, yep. Um, Equals a sphinx in subtlety. Yes, it's, uh, it's as sweet and musical as the god of music's own lute, which yep. was strung with his own hair. Made of love's hair, yes. And when, and when love speaks. And when love speaks, uh, the, all of the gods are making, like, are, like, are singing along and filling heaven with harmonies. With harmony. A poet that won't even, a poet won't even touch his pen until he's like brimming and bursting with love, with love sighs. Yep. And then his, uh, the lines of poetry that he writes will, um, will, <laughs> will, will, will make, uh, will humble a tyrant. They'll will be humble. so magnificent and profound and powerful. They'll, they have the power to humble a tyrant, which is a great chewy word, tyrant, tyrant. right? And plant and plant, plant in tyrant. plant in tyrants, mild humility, which is also a lovely thing to really tune into is the sounds that he's giving us, mm -hmm. is that sentence and plant in tyrants. Ah, mild humility, juxtaposition, beautiful. So, and the question I ask you, so he's going, he's getting really specific. He's giving all of it, but why does he keep going? Why does it go and go and go? Is it because his yeah, friends are like trying to, well, there are many answers to that question. There's no right answer, but one answer is, you know, his friends get really caught up and then they're like, we can't, we can't. And so he has to keep digging deeper. Okay, what's gonna get him is bravery. Bravery is gonna get him. What's gonna get him? Music. He's a musician, he's gonna respond to music. So I'm gonna just keep going. And then, and then he dazzles himself so much. And when love speaks, the voice of all the gods. You know, so, so that can also be his own pleasure. Cool. So you want to have a go? Hell yeah. Do it. <clears throat> it adds a precious seeing to the eye. A lover's eye will gaze an eagle blind. A lover's ear will hear the lowest sound when the suspicious head of theft is stopped. Love's feeling is more soft and sensible than are the tender horns of cockled snails. Love's tongue proves dainty Bacchus gross in taste. For valor, is not love a Hercules? Still climbing trees in the Hesperides? Subtle as Sphinx, as sweet and musical as bright Apollo's lute, strung with his hair, and when love speaks, the voice of all the gods makes heaven drowsy with the harmony. No murderous point, touch a pen to write until the ink were tempered with love's sighs. Oh, then his lines would ravish savage ears and plant in tyrants mild humility. Awesome. That's awesome. I, I really followed, I followed the build of the argument and, and here, you know, a lover's eyes will gaze an eagle blind. Like you can really find, like will gaze an eagle blind. Like give yourself that cesura, give yourself that second to find your thought. When the suspicious head of theft is stopped. Cause you've got the two S's there, right? So it gives you an opportunity to say is, stopped and then a little later as subtle as sphinx as sweet and musical as bright apollo's lute and then one step further strung with his hair like it's not just the fucking lute of apollo it's strung with his fucking hair <laughs> so i mean that's part of the the great fun of this speech is that he just it's all more it's just constantly more mm -hmm. and so now I would like to, if you guys are up to it, I'd love to hear Maddie do a run and uh, I'd love to hear Mary Glenn do a run of just
going through the whole thing, if you guys are cool with that. Sure. Yeah. Mary Glenn, do you want to start at sure. the Sure, do you want it all the way down to, to Sever Love from Charity? Um, if you feel so inclined, it's your dealer's choice. Dealer's choice. Great. <clears throat> what are we going to do? Have at you then, affections men at arms. Consider what you first did swear unto, to fast, to study, and to see no woman flat treason against the kingly state of youth. Say, can you fast? Your stomachs are too young and abstinence engenders maladies. Oh, we have made about a study, lords. And in that vow, we have forsworn our books. For when would you, my liege, or you, or you, in leaden contemplation, have found out such fiery numbers as the prompting eyes of beauty's tutors have enriched you with? Other slow arts entirely keep the brain, and therefore, finding barren practicers, scarce show a harvest of their heavy toil. But love first learned in a lady's eyes, lives not alone, immured in the brain, but with the motion of all elements, courses as swift as thought in every power, and gives to every power a double power above their functions and their offices. It adds a precious seeing to the eye. A lover's eye will gaze an eagle blind. A lover's ear will hear the lowest sound when the suspicious head of theft is stopped. A love's feeling is more soft and sensible than are the tender horns of cockled snails. A love's tongue proves dainty Bacchus gross in taste. For for valor, is not love a Hercules? Still climbing trees in the Hesperides, subtle as sphinx, as sweet and musical as bright Apollo's lute, strung with his hair. And when love speaks, the voice of all the gods makes heaven drowsy with the harmony. Never durst poet touch a pen to write until his ink were tempered with love's sighs. Oh, then his lines would ravish savage ear and plant in tyrants mild humility. Fantastic. Great. Now, Maddie, yeah. unmute. And I'm going to throw this at you, just if this is interesting to try. Okay. Just as another approach and see if it gives you anything, because... Maybe his engine is really fucking frustrated. He's pissed that he's in this <laughs> position of like, seriously, I'm the guy? Right, yeah. okay, fine. You wanna know what I think? This yeah. is what I think. Here's my argument. Also, he said this to them like at the beginning of the play. Absolutely. He's been saying this shit all along. But now you want me to save the day? Here I go, because I can. And yeah. here it is. Here you go, assholes. Great, okay, fun, cool. <sighs> Have at you then, affections men at arms. Consider what you first did swear unto, to fast, to study, and to see no woman. Flat treason against the kingly state of youth. Say, can you fast? Your stomachs are too young, and abstinence engenders maladies. Oh, we have made a vow to study, lords, and in that vow, we have forsworn our books. For when, when, when would you, my liege, or you, or you, in leaden contemplation have found out such fiery numbers as the prompting eyes of beauty's tutors have enriched you with? Other slow arts entirely keep the brain, and therefore finding the barren practicers scarce show a harvest of their heavy toil, but love, First learned in a lady's eyes, lives not alone immured in the brain, but with the motion of all the elements, courses as swift as thought in every power, and gives to every power a double power above their functions and their offices. It adds a precious eye, a precious seeing to the eye. A lover's eyes will gaze an eagle blind. A lover's ear will hear the lowest sound when the suspicious head of theft is stopped. Love's feeling 
is more soft and sensible than are the tender horns of cockled snails. Love's tongue proves dainty Bacchus gross in taste. For valor is not love a Hercules, still climbing trees in the Hesperides, subtle as sphinx, as sweet and musical, as bright Apollo's lute strung with his hair. And when love speaks, the voice of all the gods make heaven drowsy with the harmony. Never durst poet touch a pen to write until his ink were tempered with love's sighs. Oh, then his lines would ravish savage ears and plant in tyrants mild humility. Oh, lovely, lovely. That was most fun. Okay. On to the sonnets. Here we go. Thanks. <laughs> that was a pleasure. Thank you, ladies. So, uh, sonnet 29. Okay, so this, I will be working with Julia and Sade. Right on. Um, and you guys can unmute, I think. So, so a sonnet is, is, I like to think of them as not written poetry, but compressed intense little plays. And they are full of action and full of emotional and verbal challenges. Um, they're, they're kind of like little etudes, fully formed and perfect in themselves. So what I like to do with a sonnet is treat it like a little play and divide the little play into beats or acts, if you like. So the first four lines are the first beat or the first act. And the next four lines have a are a new act and a different beat with a different action. And uh, this one, um, so, so one thing I thought too we could do, uh, I mean, first we can, let's, let's, um, so one thing that, I love the sonnet so much, um, is definitely note the antithesis, of course, like right off the bat, disgrace and fortune. I mean, the sonnet's full of it and it'll really be a great guide and map. Um, and also, uh, again, play with the sejura because the sejura is your friend to create living thought. The little, the little breaths, the little moments where you can find the word um, is what really keeps the ball in the air and, and keeps it alive. And he does give us a lot of those naturally. Again, often, if you have two consonants back to back, that's just a clear opportunity. If you have two Ts, take that beat, find that second word. Um, mm -hmm. But you can really put a sejura anywhere you fucking want to. You know, I, I think um, like the second line, I beat all alone beat, but weep my outcast state. Um, or not, or I alone, I all alone, but weep my outcast state. You can move right through it. But it does something really different when you change the rhythm with a little sejura. Um, also, uh, a really wonderful word that we often ignore is and. And is a very powerful word, especially in a very, small play of a sonnet. There's a lot of power, secret power in the word and. So don't ignore it. Um, and then what I thought we could do with this sonnet is uh, think of, we're gonna work on line endings. So the line endings are a springboard. The line end propels you forward. And line endings are always an opportunity for thought. And line endings don't stop thought. They launch it forward. Yeah. So something that I find really useful is I write the last word of each line as almost a tone poem. So Sade, do you want to just read that tone poem of the last word of each line. Sure. Eyes, state, cries, fate, 
hope, possessed, scope, least, despising, state, arising, gate, brings, kings. I mean, that's basically the map, right? That's the story of the sonnet. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of uh, a magic trick when you do this tone poem of line endings <laughs> because it will give you the 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 map, the the roadmap of what it is, um, and you can do this with with all verse really. But uh, but I find it most satisfying with the sonnets. Um, and I don't know if it if uh, if it helps you. Um, but why don't we do a quick paraphrase of at least the first two beats? Sure. Um... Um, when I'm feeling unlucky and, um, and people are looking down on me mm -hmm. and I feel alone and I'm crying this, um, this rejected state of mine. Yep. Um, and I am crying to the heaven. I'm trying, crying to God. And God and doesn't even listen. The, the, uh, God doesn't even listen. And I'm, again, I'm like looking at myself and this fucking state that I'm in. This piece of shit that I am. Yeah, this piece of shit that I am. And I'm shaming myself. Yep. Uh, wishing me, uh, wish that I had a little bit more hope. Uh, wish I, I was good looking, that I had um, more friends, that I had more skills, that I had more opportunities in life. And I, and, and when I'm like, uh, when I have also lost faith and, and, and um, I don't even like the things I liked before. Um, um, and, and when I'm like in this feeling of just, just I'm down, I'm just like rock bottom. I'm just like despising, almost like, just like down there. Yep. I think of you. And then all of a sudden, my feelings, my state, like, like, a, like a bird, like a lark that like, um, wakes up every morning and starts singing from, um, yes, from singing from sullen earth, uh, sings well, the- The lark rises at the break of day earth. from the dark earth into the sky, right? Into the sky, yeah, rises. That's how I feel, because uh, the way I remember your sweet love and the way I remember you, it brings so much wealth and so much um, abundance to me that I don't even want to change the state, what I'm feeling with what kings have. Yes, exactly. So... Do you have a feeling of what the, so if the first act is when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, it's also not just men, it's men's eyes, right? Right. Which is a very specific choice. It's a very specific image because I'm disgraced in, in their eyes. They're mm -hmm. looking at me. And, uh, down to and look upon myself and curse my fate. Mm -hmm. New act, act two, wishing me like to one more rich in hope. Mm -hmm. So what, do you have an idea in your mind of what the first beat is and then what happens in the second beat? Yes. Great. And keep in mind those word endings being, uh, line endings being springboards. Mm -hmm. propelling the thought forward. So you want to have a go at it? Sure. When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone be with my outcast state and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me like to one more rich in hope. F featured like him? Oh, do, where, where did you? Do you want me to stop? No, keep going, keep going. It's great. Okay. Yeah. Um, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, 
desiring this man's art and that man's scope with what I most enjoy, content at least. Yet in these thoughts, myself almost despising, happily I think on thee, and then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising from sullen earth, sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love, sing, um, for thy sweet love remembered, such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Beautiful, beautiful. So, what do you? Th what is your character's? Uh, state what what is what is your story what is your situation here what is what are you are you uh bottoming out are you hitting bottom are you in a shame yeah. spiral yes got it and then the interesting thing i learned this recently in another sonic class that i was taking which was radical to me happily mm -hmm. doesn't mean joyfully it means accidentally Mm. Isn't that crazy? That blew my mind. So <laughs> accidentally, when I'm in this, this shame spiral, when I'm in this fucking nightmare of self-hatred, mm -hmm. accidentally you come into my mind. Like mm -hmm. randomly, you enter my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then it's like Lazarus. I, I rise from the dead. I, I am brought back to life like a lark rising from the, the dark earth at dawn to the heaven light filled sky. Mm -hmm. And because thinking of you, I remember now how pure and beautiful your love is. I mean, it's such a weird, spontaneous, uh, chaotic series of thoughts and feelings that this person mm -hmm. is immersed in it's so interesting and that's also the beauty of really using those line endings to keep propelling because it's almost you want to take the time to find the thoughts and and feel it but also it's good to lose control of the steering wheel a little bit mm -hmm. um because uh this person is <laughs> mm -hmm. um so with that in mind would you have another go Sure. Awesome. When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone be whip my outcast state and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless, bootless cries and look upon myself and crazy, curse my fate, wishing me to like, can I start again? Absolutely. And it's also just so you know, uh, it's I all alone beweep. 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 Yep. Yes. <clears throat> when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope with what I most enjoy, content at least. Yet in these thoughts, myself almost despising, happily I think on thee, and then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising, from sullen earth sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank Beautiful. You. Absolutely. Okay, Julia R. Yes. Hello. Hi. So Fantastic. So we are going to go further into this. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because something that really hit me that time is yet in these thoughts, myself, almost despising. Yeah, it's just on the brink. Almost, almost hate myself so much. 
but not a hundred percent. I'm not ready to jump off the cliff. Mm -hmm. I'm really fucked up, but I'm not totally gone yet. Mm -hmm. And then I also, that, that then makes me think about, it's funny. Um, Michael Langham was a, a gentleman who was my, my first great teacher and he was a brilliant British director and I could go on and on about him, but he, he had a funny quote. He, he would say, you, you act Chekhov with your heart and Shakespeare with your wit. And I think he would agree, you also have to have a ton of heart for Shakespeare and a ton of wit for Chekhov, but you know, just in big primary colors, those were his, that was his theory. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. Mm -hmm. So I'm also interested in maybe, I think it's this sonnet, this play can be someone as Sade was, someone really struggling and bottoming out and just filled with so much shame and self-loathing. And it can be someone taking the piss out of themselves. Like I'm an absurd yeah. fucking person. When I get like this, when everyone's staring at me and like acting like I'm a piece of shit and I believe that I'm a piece of shit and I hate myself and I wish that I could to be that and I wish I was that and I'm not that and it really sucks and I'm almost going to shoot myself in the head. But it's so fucking crazy because like I suddenly saw your picture and then I felt like I was going to like fucking fly through the air and it, it blew my mind how meaningful it was and how how quickly things can change in a second i can go from really feeling like i'm gonna die to feeling like i am king of the world mm -hmm. life is funny so what do you think you want to give it a shot <laughs> just play with that <laughs> it's probably going to be like the least funny thing now that <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have to be funny doesn't have to be funny okay, not at no, all no, I was just kidding okay <clears throat> when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes I all alone beweep my outcast state and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries and look upon myself and curse my fate Wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art to and that man's scope with what I most enjoy contented least. Yet in these thoughts myself almost despising, haply I think on thee. And then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising from sullen earth, sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Beautiful, beautiful. Now I'd like to you to do that again. And I'd like you to just really think of those line endings as springboards and keep, it, keep the thought moving. Mm -hmm. And it, I loved the shift for thy sweet love remembered such well. It's like almost a completely different, it is a completely different act. It is the last act of a play. Yeah. And it's like a truly private moment. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. All right, let's hear it again, please. Okay. <clears throat> when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope with what I most enjoy contented least. Yet in these thoughts myself almost despising, haply I think on thee. And then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising from sullen earth sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Lovely, beautiful. All right, that was the sonnets, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so now we're on to Hamlet. Ha ha ha. Okay, and I have 
four lovely actors, Hanji, Larry, Julia, and Risharda. Yes? Yay! All right. Okay, so Hamlet. Wow. Hamlet is going to the heart of the existential question of what a human being is, right? For all its, its wonder, a human being is ultimately a pile of dust. So this speech is full of the contrast between the angelic heights to which humans can rise on one hand and their mortal corruptible bodies on the other and the corruption of the mind in oneself. So it's also that phenomena of, you know, considering the wonders of the universe, humans are completely insignificant, which is one of the experiences I think we're all having right now. And another thing that's really interesting right now, something that, that is an odd little habit of mine, which may interest you guys or not, um, is uh, I remember when I was doing measure for measure and I, learned a lot because uh, I was going to this convent a lot to do research. And uh, I learned that um, the King James Bible was coming out at that time while Shakespeare was writing it. And so, and especially the Psalms were coming out. And uh, so there was so much dialogue that he was sort of creating between the Psalms, especially, and some of his plays. And, and it's so interesting because in Psalm 8, it, it is, let me look, I have it written down. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, what is man? That thou art mindful of him. And, uh, and that's so much of what Hamlet says. I mean, it's almost a direct quote. It's not, but it's, it's almost a direct quote. Um, so, Something that I want to do with Hamlet, because if you remember, which was a long time ago now, but when I first started talking to you guys today, I said that my steps to text preparation was paraphrase, make a paraphrase, identify the argument, check the meter, check the antithesis, find, drive towards the lined endings, and find the verbs. So we haven't done the meter, but like I started saying, that's like a music theory class and that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother day. But um, we can find the verbs. We have not found the verbs yet. And uh, finding the verbs also will be your friend. Um, because uh, the verbs are the most expressive words in Shakespeare and the verbs provide the energy of the thoughts to drive to the line endings, to drive, through these thoughts, because sometimes these thoughts are majestic mountainsides. You know, sometimes they're incredibly domestic, and that's also beautiful. Scale, understand the scale of the thought, because uh, thoughts can um, really slow down and condense and get very domestic. Um, so that's that's something that that. Shakespeare does a lot is he sort of yo-yos with language, like the yo-yo will go really far out and then it'll zoom right back in. And so that's a really fun thing to tune into and play with. So, um, all right. So, um, Hanji, you wanna start with me? Sure. Do you wanna start doing our quick paraphrase exercise? And yeah. I think just for sake of time, why don't we just start from I have of late yeah, but wherefore cool. I know not. Great. So, so, what are we saying? Recently, um, I, I don't know why, I've lost all my joy. I've given up all my daily routines, and it's um, affected my um, my behavior so much so that this that 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 being on like on Earth, this Earth seems to me. I mean. It, just earth just seems to me like a like a like a like limbo that seems like a like a prison to me feels empty right yes empty. and um the the sky this thing that's above us um the, it's so beautiful and it always it looks like it's on it looks like it's wreathed in fire 
it it just seems like a like a like a disgusting gross collection of like air particles and what a fine like, the human being is a, is a it's a wonderful it's a beautiful specimen um so reasonable and um like the the the, the power the ability to to think is endless um and the movement and just their form is so impressive uh and they and the actions are kind of angelic, mm-hmm. um, and the the understanding is kind of godlike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Massive scope, right? Majestic yeah. mountain range thoughts there. And the the thing, yeah, the understanding is godlike, and uh, they're, they're just like so. Nothing beautiful. More beautiful. Nothing. So fucking beautiful. Yeah, and above all animals um, That's right. but then to me it, they're nothing it's, it's just like they're just dust to me and man doesn't appeal to me nor women but by you know you're laughing so you seem to think think otherwise That's right. That's right. So here's an interesting thing about this speech, right, is about halfway through. So, I mean, one thing, too, that's always wonderful is find your character's uncertainty, because certainty isn't interesting. (laughs) Uncertainty is endlessly fascinating, and it will give you an engine to feed on all night long, is constantly be a little off kilter, be a little off balance because that's how we are in the world, right? It's very rare that we're solidly, completely confident and clear of exactly everything that's happening. And yeah. certainly with Hamlet, it's a lot of uncertainty. So that'll help you. And it's so interesting because he's on this journey to understand like, what the fuck is wrong with me? What is going on with me? I don't understand that and also there's the, the three, there's the rule of three. He has three goes at the sky to describe it, which means that each image kind of expands a little more and a little more and a little more because he keeps trying to be satisfied with the description he's giving, right? First one, no, that's not, this, this excellent canopy, no, uh, this brave, or hanging firmament, no. Uh, This majestical roof fretted with golden fire. That's what the fuck it is, but fuck. It's just polluted air to me. It's just fucking polluted air, this firmament of fire. So it takes him three tries to kind of get to the uh, beauty of the image that he's trying to express that he knows he he should see. That is what most people see when they look at a beautiful day. So it's, it's a process, right? These thoughts are a process and they move and they build. And the three-part build is something that Shakespeare uses a lot. And, and it, it is really exciting and energetic because it gives, it's just, it, you just hop from one rung to the next, to the next. And then you're like, okay, I gotta, I gotta move on. I've spent three tries at this and I got where I got. Now I'm moving on to the next thought. But then after it's just a fucking polluted sky, new act, right? It's, mm. it's like another act of a play. My God, what a piece of work is a man. It's a whole new, like he's hit between the eyes by this radical quandary that he, he's posing. And he, he starts down this new, chasing this new rabbit of trying to really unpack the, the majesty of man. And even that doesn't fucking get him where he needs to go. And then the atomic bomb detonates, mm-hmm. which is man delights not me. Fuck. 
All right. You want to have a go? <laughs> sure, absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercises, and, and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave or hanging firmament this majestical roof fretted with golden fire, why, it, it appears no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty. In form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world, the, the paragon of animals. And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. No, nor women neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. Fantastic. Beautiful. I mean, I really followed the progress of the thought. It was so clear. It was, it was so clear. It's, uh, yeah, it's so, ah, uh, it's so interesting. Yeah. Um, now, again, just as an exercise is a go at it. How about the heart versus wit exercise. Okay. Because he's also an incredibly funny fucker and he is taking the piss out of himself all the time. And he is fucking with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Mm -hmm. And he is suffering and he is at a loss and he is wrestling and he is taking the piss. Mm. So, uh, and, and he is making an argument. So pursue your argument because your thoughts and your emotions are clear. Now you can move through those and pursue your argument with them. Cause you're also, you're presenting this to them. You're not talking to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Let's hear it. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercises. And indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this Goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave aura hanging firmament, this majestical roof fretted with golden fire. Why, it appears no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty. In form and moving, how express and admirable. In, in action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world. The paragon of animals. And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust. Man delights not me. No, nor women neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. Excellent. Excellent. Now, Richarda, you're up next. So here's something that I think might be interesting for you. Um, so I love chewing over punctuation as well. And in the different folios, they're ever changing. So it just depends on what version you're looking at. And in the first folio, the punctuation is all question marks. Mm -hmm. What a piece of work is a man? Question mark. How noble in reason? Mm -hmm. How it's all questions. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So I would love to hear you pose those questions and, and just where that gets you as far as the movement of the speech. Cause it, I think you'll arrive at a very different place. If it's all question, question, not, not, not observations and statements, but really searching and asking those questions. When you arrive at man delights, not me, that's your answer to those questions, mm -hmm. which is a very different journey. Okay. And the other thing that I'd be really interested in, just because I'm now I'm chasing this rabbit, is uh, if if you are talking to Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, or just Rosencrantz, or just Guildenstern, and you are pissed, and you know what they're up to, mm -hmm. and if your thoughts about man is about that man. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. interested in what that does to the language. You want to have a go? Yes. Awesome. And starting from... Um, I, I have of late. I but have you can start wherever you want. Okay. Not, um, can I try it and I will tell you why? Is that okay? Absolutely. All right. I will tell you why. So shall my anticipation prevent your discovery and your secrecy to the king and queen molt no feather. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, foregone all custom of exercises, and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory this most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave o'erhang firmament, this majestical roof fretted with gold and fire. Why, it appears no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is man! How noble in reason! How infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how express and admirable in action. How like an angel in apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me, no, no a woman neither. But by your smiling, you seem to say so. Fantastic, fantastic. If you would humor me, I would love to have, I would love to go from the second, the second act of yes. the speech. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, another thing that's really interesting is the word is in the speech, which is another sort of secret word like and. So what a piece of work is a man? Because is is to be, is to be, is a thing real, is it not? Is is the platform. So, uh, and in Hamlet, of course, you know, is to be, these are all little very small but very important lily pads to land on, I think. Um, but I would like I would I would like you to revisit the idea of uncertainty. Okay. And and I'm I'm interested in hearing you uh, search with those questions to really so you don't know what. It, it's hard because in the text, because they come to full stops with those exclamation points or question marks, how do we keep moving through that and searching instead of arriving at how we feel and declaring how we feel? How do we stay in the question of what is it? What is it? Because that's the, that's the other key to Hamlet. Yes, is this dissatisfied itch that won't fucking stop. And it's this constant searching, questioning, 
So you can go from the, the beginning or, or that section, whatever you feel like. <laughs> okay, just jump oh, into him. Okay. It's no problem. Come on. <laughs> I will tell you why. So shall my anticipation prevent your discovery and your secrecy to the king and queen mulch no feather. I have a late, but wherefore I know not. Lost all my mirth. Forgone all custom of exercises, and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave o'erhanging firmament, this majestical roof fretted with gold and fire, why? It appears no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how express and admirable in action, how like an angel in apprehension, how like a God, the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals, and yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me, no, nor woman either. I, though by your smiling, you seem to say so. Beautiful. That was great. Excellent. Yes, I was surprised. I was surprised with your surprise. <laughs> yes. Okay. Larry, you're up. Yes. 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 Hello. Hello. So, uh, so let's just stay in this track. Um, one, one, Thing I play with, which may or may not help you at all, is uh, I, you know, like sort of in the opposite vein of what we were talking about with Baroon as sort of one's hype speech. Mm -hmm. Often, if I have to come in, mm -hmm. I will give myself, uh, even while I'm like walking into a fucking scene, I'll talk to myself. Yes, um, me too. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll be like, fuck, I have no idea what the fuck is wrong with me. What the fuck right. is wrong with me? Yes. I have a late. I where for I I don't know. I'm just fucking <laughs> sad. So so play with that. Okay. Um and uh something that, that I, I want us to really hone in on now are the verbs. The verbs. Yeah. Because uh, what's happened? You've lost all your mirth, right? That's what you <sighs> lost it. So that's a big chunk right there. That's, that's going to drive your car. That mirth. Yes. And you've foregone mm. all custom of exercises. And it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame here seems. What is it? It seems to me the goodly frame, antithesis, sterile promontory. So also let's go through, let's be mindful of our verbs and really let them drive our car and then pay attention to our antithesis because that it's just such a gift when you really let those play, you know, yes. we have the goodly frame and the sterile promontory. And it is promontory. That's how it scans for what it's worth. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like, although yeah. we're all like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm, gonna say, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say you promontory. You say <laughs> what? It makes me, no, because it makes me feel like I have to like talk like a British, and like and that's what actually blocks my Fair access enough. to the pieces. Fair and enough. I can't, I just can't, sorry. And no need to, no yes. need to. I also believe in like rewriting fucking words if they're not yeah. working for you. Because wow. it's living thought and it's a living language. 
Mm. And I am known to add a fuck and a shit on occasion to a piece of text. Yeah. Say it out loud on a Broadway stage. It's happened <laughs> many times. Even in Shakespeare? And absolutely, absolutely in Shakespeare. I've it's a living notes language. On it. I've gotten many, many notes on it. And yet I continue to do it because it's living thought and it's a living language. Okay? So, Larry, live it. Let's hear it. And, and really, like, do give yourself your, your, like, talk yourself into it, whatever you want to do. Yes, I just, I can't right now. It's just like this pandemic. I mean, like, oh my God, like, all my jobs done left. Like, where is this rent coming from? Like, I ain't trying, I don't understand, like, what, what is the point of, like, <laughs> even, why am I, what's the point of anything? I don't get, I don't get, I, I, but there has to be a point. And, you know, I, I, I have of late, but for wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, foregone all custom of exercises. And indeed, it, it, it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air. Look you, this brave or hanging firmament, this majestical roof of fretted with golden fire. Why, it appears no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason, <laughs> how infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how expressed in admirable in action, how like an angel in apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world the paragon of animals. Woo. And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me, nor woman neither. <laughs> Though by your smiling, you seem to say so. <laughs> Excellent. Now, what I'd like to do Oof. is I would like you yes. to have to really work on those three builds. Like that one. No, that did, yes. no, that's no, this no, fuck. No, it's not. It's, it's an inner dissatisfaction. You, you need to express the air, the universe, the, the, you need to express what the sky is. You need to mm. express it. You're not finding mm. it. You're not finding it. Okay. Mm. This mm. majestical roof fretted with golden fire. Yes. You yeah. arrive at it. But it takes you three tries. So. Um, yes. And then the thing I, I loved, I loved your interpretation, but I want you to now do a, a different direction of you know intellectually what a magnificent creature man is. You know, you understand, you've been told, you've read books, you've read poems, you've seen all of the paintings, you've seen all of the movies, you've had all of the experiences with all of the human beings, you know. Man is incredible, you know. Right, I know. It's, it's the, the smartest, the godlike, incredible, incredible. I know, I know, it's, it's, angelic and godlike and there's nothing more beautiful and we surpass all other animals intellectually you know but it's not but it's all it's all hollow it's all bullshit so have a go let's hear that ah uh, i have of late but wherefore i know not 
lost all my mirth. Forgone all custom of exercises. And indeed, it, it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, that the, the, the earth seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the, the, the air, the, the, the look at you, the, look, look, look you, the, this brave or hanging firmament, this, this majestical roof uh, fretted with, with golden fire. Why, it, it, it appears to me, it, I don't think I did what you said. I think you did, though. I think you did. <laughs> Why do you I think you... I, I have to stop doing that? But, 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 so but. we all do, man. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That's the golden ticket right there. The old second guessing. Yes. yes. And that's the okay. other thing is like me watching you, I bought it. You didn't feel it, and that's fine. Because, fuck. You know, you don't have to fucking feel it. I just have to believe yes. it. So yes. That's, yes. And that's the only thing that I will say someday, someday. You may be interested in meter, not because the Brits use it, but because it, it unlocks things and it gives us tricks and because it's built in the language that sometimes what the, the rhythmic power that's built into the language can help us with storytelling that even if we don't feel it, it, it's playing. It's yes, playing. yes. I just offered that. No, I, let me be clear. I love meter, I love rhythm. I love it like it's a, like a poem or a rap song or something, but I don't like when it makes me have to say words that I don't, uh -huh. like commentary. I uh -huh. don't, that uh -huh. distracts me. I'm just saying that that distracts me. It no, is. I love rhythm actually, and meter I mean. Okay. Um, you can begin again if you want. Um, I'll just, in. I don't, I don't want to, okay. So I'll just jump in. Um, 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 the earth, the earth, the earth, the earth seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the, the air, look you, this brave or herring of the firmament, this majestical roof fretted with golden fire. Why it appears to me, why it appears no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, and form and moving, how expressed and admirable in action, how like an angel in apprehension, how like a god, the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals, and yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. No, no woman neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. Fantastic. You know, also, just always remember, like when you have a three-part build like that. Yes, teach me more. Again, <laughs> <laughs> just always remember too that the sejura is always your friend. You know, yeah. you can and you can employ it wherever the fuck you want. Now, that doesn't mean you can pause and get comfortable. It just means mm. you can give yourself the opportunity to take a breath and find it. So, and sejura means for people I know to, because I went to Carnegie Mellon. Uh huh. <laughs> yes, you do know. <laughs> But sejura is a delicate little pause. It's a little breath. Yes. It's a hair's okay. breath to, as we know, breathing is inspiration, inspire yes. to bring it in, bring the breath in. And mm. find it. So just take a quick breath and move. And so this brave or hanging firmament, this, I mean, there's a, also yes. a reason why it's this most excellent canopy, the air. Look you, this brave or hanging firmament, this. So take that, yes. use those, this, you know, yes. there's a reason for that repetition too. Got it. All Thank right. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Julia, it is your <laughs> turn. Yes. Hello. So um, what I really want us to uh, focus on now is, uh, well, there are a couple of things. One thing I think is very cool are the monosyllables. You know, when he writes monosyllables, like lost. What's monosyllables? That's just one bump, you know, one at a time. 
So mm -hmm. lost all my mirth. He is okay. laying it out. He's giving you a, a very slow, clear statement. Lost mm -hmm. all my mirth. And then he balances it at the end of the speech with man delights not me. And that's kind of the journey, I think. You begin with lost all my mirth, and it takes you all of that way to figure out why. And the reason is because man delights not me. Um, and those, and the, the way it's written with the monosyllables kind of gives you that guide. Um, but again, I'd really like us to get back to the verbs and the verbs being the engine of the speech. And, and sort of like we did with the sonnet, if this is useful to you, what I, what I do, like I did with the sonnet with line endings, I always make a little tone poem of the last word of every line. I also do that with verbs. I go through a speech and I find all the verbs and then I make a, a tone poem and follow my way through the verbs, just track the verbs of the speech. And that too gives me sort of, like the, the line endings give me the spine, the verbs give me the engine. So again, the first few lines have lost, foregone, goes, seems, look, appears. Um, what about, oh, fretted is not, right? Oh, it's fretted not. Is not. No. Um, so if you want to just have a, a go, um, yes. tuning into, tuning into the verbs and playing with anything that we've talked about, that's useful. Okay, cool. And also attending to those monosyllable phrases for what it's mm -hmm. worth, just to hear if that does anything. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, foregone all custom of exercises, and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory, this most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave, overhanging firmament, this majestic roof fretted with golden fire. Why? It appears no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty in form and moving how express and admirable in action how like an angel in apprehension how like a god the beauty of the world the paragon of animals and yet to me what is this quintessence of dust man delights not me no nor woman neither though by your smiling you seem to say so Excellent. Excellent. Now, why, why do you feel, is your Hamlet, do you feel in a, a sort of an existential crisis? Is, uh, are you feeling uh, at sea and uncertain and scared of this world that you're looking around at, is it almost like pre-psychotic state of like everything's distorted and I don't know fucking why. I can't see the sky like the rest of the world sees a fucking sky. I know I'm supposed to see it like this, like, like this, no, like, like this. But what I see is not that, it's this. Is that where you're, because that's what I'm receiving, which is, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. <laughs> I think I'm more, I feel more like everything is a lie. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, the king and the queen is a lie. You two are a lie. Everything I see, like what I see is different from what they really are. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 So then I'm going to encourage you to really dig into the antithesis. The, the really, you know, really set up the goodly frame and the sterile promontory. Okay. The, the majestical roof and the congregation of fucking vapors. What is said to be there and what you actually see. What is the truth of what you see and what you're expected to see. I want to hear your argument. I want to hear that. I want mm -hmm. you to set those things apart and, and, um, and then, uh, and again, just keep um, leaning into the verbs. Okay. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercises. And indeed, it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave o'erhanging firmament, this majestical roof fretted with golden fire. Why, it appears to me, no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors? What a piece of work is a man? How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form and moving how express and admirable, in action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god, the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Men delights not me. No, nor woman neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. Excellent, excellent. I, I really followed where you were going. And I would also just say again, like really laying out lost all my mirth. That is, okay. that verb will carry you a long way because that verb is, is everything that's happening. That's the weather Hamlet's in, right? Lost, lost, let's see, I've lost it, I've lost it. And that, that's such an informative, um, state of being at the beginning of this speech at the beginning of this play <laughs> beautiful great work you guys that was really fun i hope it was at least entertaining for you <laughs> thank you so much oh my gosh not at all that was it was phenomenal thank you it was phenomenal. it was my <laughs> pleasure you guys my pleasure so great. That was so fun to watch and listen. And I learned so much. Um, we have some questions that have come in during the class that I would love to ask you. And Are these just for me or for everybody? I think they're mainly just for you, but okay. <laughs> open it up. Um, pull the room if we need to. Um, okay. And if anybody watching has more questions, again, I encourage you just to use the Q&A tab and I will monitor that. Okay, so let's see. We've had some questions about um, the idea of discovery in these long monologues. Mm -hmm. and, you know, asking you to maybe build a little bit more on your earlier thought of the three-part process. That the we three, uh-huh, sure, sure. You mean about, um, Paraphrase. Yeah. Find your argument. Check the meter. Check antithesis. Drive toward line endings and find the verbs. So, yeah, I mean that's sort of what we we've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, each person kind of got to sort of uh, try out each of those approaches, and I think we got to see sort of in action the what they do. Um, the great thing about each of those things, I mean, the making a paraphrase is just like, that's just the baseline, you know, this is what you do. Um, but after that, you know, identifying the argument, um, finding the verbs, 
driving towards the line endings, it's like you can just keep playing with that because that's just, that's just music, you know? Um, and that's, I mean, this language is just music. You're playing music and you can play it fast. You can play it slow. You can suddenly stop and then pick up really fast. You can, you know, uh, you can really, but, but that's why the, the paraphrase is so essential because, and I also highly recommend <laughs> that one, as an actor, I strongly recommend this. This is my way of working. You guys, again, take this with a grain of salt. This is how I do it. But for me, what I find is I come in fully loaded. I do all this work on my own before I enter a rehearsal room. So I'm off book. I've scanned my shit. I've paraphrased my shit. I've, you know, really sort of built the scaffolding of the language. And uh, so then I can just start playing free form. Um, because we have five minutes in America to rehearse plays <laughs> and it's really hard. We have no fucking time. So, you know, that's why I started with that Artaud quote of being an athlete of the soul because athletics take a lot of preparation and the shit is super athletic and it takes a lot of preparation. And I think if you're doing Shakespeare, it's as serious as being, you know, an Olympian. You, you have to work like that. <laughs> it takes that. Um, that's my opinion. Um, and you can't, you can't get flabby, you know, you gotta like fucking read this shit all the time. <laughs> you gotta like look at it and think about it because also the, the more at hand's reach it is for you, the easier it all is and the more it is living thought. And that's, that's the whole joy. That's the whole, that's the fun and that's the pleasure when you're surfing that big Shakespearean wave, um, it's a blast. That's great. In, in thinking about the living thought and, and discovery, how do you balance the time that the thought takes, searching for the right word or way to say something while continuing to uphold the rhythm of the language? Well, you know, because it is living thought, it's not, ponderous thought <laughs> it's not <laughs> rheumatoid thought it's you know it's it's about moving through an idea it's about searching it's about the the uh need for the word it's the need um to find the language so that's going to propel you that's going to be an engine you're not going to sort of meander although there are moments where i think the language will instruct you to meander again the monosyllabic moments to really lay down these key statements, these key arguments. It's in the language though, you'll find it, you'll feel it. Uh, and because, because it is built on argument, because everything is constantly, you're constantly building your argument, letting the argument emerge, playing the argument, acting, acting is an argument. So articulating your point of view, stating your position, laying out a line of reasoning and building your, your, a convincing case, that's, gonna, that's very forward moving stuff. That's not back foot stuff, that's front foot stuff. That's great. We had somebody comment that consonants suddenly so, seem so extra important in these pieces. And they sure are. Do you have, recommend ways of working on sounds as a tool as, as your, Look sure, sure. I mean, Baroon is a great one uh, to look at that. Um, you know, oh my gosh. I just looked at this first line. Never durst poet touch a pen to write until his ink were tempered with love's size. You know, that just the sounds in that line. Never durst poet, T, touch, T. So it's the extremity of like, a poet doesn't even dare touch his fucking pen until he's filled to the brim with love. And it's, uh, I mean, that word sighs, the sound of it just gives you everything. Make heaven drowsy with the harmony. Those are vowels, the opposite, but those open sounds, those ravishing sounds lead you in a whole different way. Um, my God as subtle as sphinx 
find it as subtle as sphinx. What is the most subtle thing? A fucking sphinx. Take that caesura, as subtle as sphinx. So uh, yeah, those are a couple of examples. That's great. Let's see, I'm just scanning these questions as I'm asking you. Um, can you briefly explain what checking the antithesis means? Oh yeah, sure. So we were just looking at that in Hamlet, right? So Hamlet, it's basically when you have two opposing thoughts set up against each other, which is a, a classic legal strategy, right? But it's also a classic literary device is uh, antithesis. So you have, um, and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, this goodly frame, right? The earth seems to me a sterile promontory. So goodly frame, sterile promontory. So you're taking two things and juxtapos juxtaposing them. They have often equal value, but they're opposites and you're putting them against each other to highlight the value of each. That's great. And now we're going to go with one final question. And so this class, you know, surrounded obviously the classics, but there is a question here that I just have to find. Pause for a <laughs> Reading and talking is not my strong suit. <laughs> Um, let, yes. Okay. Let's see. You spoke about your process for beginning with classical texts. How do you approach contemporary texts? Do you, do you find that you use any of these tools? I do. I use all of these tools, actually. I use all of these tools other than maybe paraphrase, depending on, depending on the play, depending on the language. Um, although I do fucking paraphrase even totally brand new shit. Um, I paraphrase for TV all the time, just to put it in my own vernacular, you know, just to get it in my mouth, in my head, um, say it how I say it. And then I, I do, I am a firm believer that I was hired to do the script that was written, you know, for the most part with a few adjustments. <laughs> um, but, you know, if, if I'm hired to, you know, if I'm shooting a movie, I'm not a big, like, I'm going to rewrite this scene until it, is the way I want it. I, I believe like the writer is the writer and uh, my job is to make their language work. Um, but yeah, I'll paraphrase it so I can approach it. Um, I definitely find the verbs. I definitely find the ends of the, the thought, you know, the line endings where the thought's driving to. I definitely find antithesis. Absolutely. That's great. Well, thank you so much for this incredible yeah. class. Thank you to all the participants. There's a lot of really lovely comments in the Q&A about just thanking you for how wonderful this was. Well, I thank you all. It was, it was my pleasure. It was my, my, my pleasure, my enjoyment. It was a gift to me. So thank you. Be safe, everybody. It was a real treat. And as we're signing off, I just want to highlight some upcoming uh, classes and chats that we have. So this Wednesday, May 20th, join us for a fireside chat with intimacy directors Claire Warden and Denise Divya Johnson. On Monday, June 1st, please join us for a masterclass, Objects and the Songs They Sing, with uh, Will, director Will Davis. And you can find a list of all our upcoming programming at my2w.org. This masterclass and all of the workshops virtual programming is offered free and available to the entire MYTW community. All artists who contribute to these online gatherings are compensated and we're continuing to pay our staff, me. So if you are in the position to support our work with a gift of $25, $10, $5, a dollar, any amount, please consider donating to support our work through this crisis and beyond. You can donate at mitw.org. There'll be a link to a short survey and a post event email from Zoom or in the comments on Facebook. Please take a moment to share your thoughts. We'd love to hear what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. And thank you so much for watching everybody. Have a great rest of your Monday. And thank you again, Elizabeth and class. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you.